Hello, this video is to provide you with a brief overview of the Omniverse CloudMaker project. To open the scene, navigate in your content browser to the project folder and double click on cloudmaker.usd. We'll touch on some tips, tricks, and other helpful hints to illustrate how best to demonstrate Omniverse and its role in the creation of this scene. The fantastical world of the CloudMaker project was brought to life by NVIDIA's in-house art team using Omniverse Create and a host of digital content creation applications which share data formats with Create using Omniverse connectors. Maxon ZBrush was instrumental in the creation of various props in the CloudMaker world, like these wooden props of the barrels and the bridges and gangways. The assets of the grass and other vegetation covering the island were created using instancing and geometry instantiation in Autodesk 3ds Max. All of the detailed textures on the house and the river stones were painted with Adobe Substance 3D Painter. Collaboration is at the heart of Omniverse, and enabling multiple artists to add their vision to a rendered scene in real time is one of the most productive ways to create amazing visuals. Let's take a look at how you can use cameras in the scene to add visual narrative and focus on details in the world. There are four predefined cameras in the stage. You can see them listed in the stage panel. Switching cameras is done by clicking on the camera label in the top left of the viewport and selecting the desired camera to look through. Each of the cameras has an animation on them. The animation was created using keyframing in the curve editor. You can experiment with creating new cameras and animating them to concentrate on your favorite parts of the scene. Create's sequencer panel is in the window animation menu of the top menu bar. Use the camera icon in the top left corner of the panel to enable playback of the animated cameras. In this example, there are already three camera clips added to the sequence. Scrubbing through the sequence in the timeline, the sequencer automatically switches cameras when reaching a new clip. Note, you can't switch cameras while that blue camera icon is highlighted. Turn it off to look through the fourth camera in the scene. That camera has also been animated using two simple keyframes. You can use the curve editor, which also is found in the window animation menu, to animate the focal distance as the camera tracks. Just right click on the attribute name in the property panel and set key to add a keyframe for a focal distance of 700 units at frame zero. Then set another keyframe at frame 120 with a value of 500 using the same method. Inspect the curve by clicking on the focal distance attribute in the list on the left and framing the curve using the frame all button. Notice the focal distance changing as you scrub the timeline. Now the new animated camera clip with its animated focus distance can be added to the rest of the clips in the sequencer window. Simply drag the camera 4 object from the stage panel directly onto the timeline in the sequencer panel. You can even adjust the length and position on the timeline of the clip after you've added it. Building sequences this way by animating cameras and effects interactively and using sequencer to experiment with the order and the length of the shots makes for a very compelling and entertaining live demonstration. Another engaging way to work with the CloudMaker scene in an interactive demonstration is to experiment with environment variations. You can start with the dome light located under the HDRI sky transform in the stage panel. Middle mouse dragging in the text field for the Z rotation will allow you to change the lighting angle and view the background sky from different perspectives. Navigate in the content browser to the folder called Sky Sphere Chase, and there are other 4K HDR images you can try on the Sky Dome texture. Just drag a texture onto the texture file pointer in the property panel to view different options for your background environment. The Moonlit Sky is fun because you can use it to begin turning the daytime scene into a night shot. You can turn off the dome light or hide it by clicking on its visibility eyeball in the stage panel. Another dome light already hidden in the scene for you to turn on is located under the night lights hierarchy. It uses the same moonlit texture with some values preset to create a deep night sky. There's also a moonlight and a dim fill light which add even more atmosphere. In the content browser, you'll find the models folder contains a prop called Garden Lantern. Simply drag the GardenLantern.usd prop into the scene anywhere you'd like to add a splash of light and color. Here, we're placing a lantern at one side of the small bridge and then duplicating others around the scene to create a warm and welcoming nighttime ambiance. One of the duplicates is then turned upside down and modified by hiding one mesh of the geometry to create a hanging lantern over the entrance portico. One more lighting effect we'll suggest here is added by first selecting the geometry for the windows of the island house. Selecting the material swatch for the geometry in the property panel reveals the material properties. 
Scroll down to the Emissive tab and enable Emission so the windows will glow with a warm light. We encourage you to take the time to practice and become familiar with these demonstration techniques for the Cloudmaker scene. Have fun experimenting with your own vision of the environment by trying different lighting and rendering effects. Enjoy, and thanks for watching.